What's good, everybody on YouTube? This is your boy, Akil McLeod, back with another video. And today I'm going to go through some of the stuff that I picked up on Wednesday from the 50% off Goodwill sale. Every Wednesday, the, the I believe it's the second. I believe it's the first Wednesday of the month. No, the second Wednesday of the month and the last Wednesday of the month. I have these 50% off sales at my local Goodwill. Sometimes, uh, depending on, I guess, their inventory, they even let customers go in the back and try to just like cipher through some of the bins that they have as well. So sometimes it's super chaotic. I used to hate doing it, but now that I'm, you know, I've just become more comfortable with it. I'm, I'm back there, like, you know, just trying to battle with all the other people, just trying to get as much stuff as possible. And the good thing about it is the fact that you're getting the stuff that hasn't been picked over yet. You're getting the stuff that didn't even hit the, the racks yet, that didn't even go on the hangers. So personally, I've been able to grab a bunch of really good brands. And the good, the one thing that I noticed is that a lot of people, when, when they're out at these different thrift stores, these 50% off sales, I always think that people are resellers. But a lot of times people are back there um, just basically doing the most, but they're shopping for themselves. So I see people toss aside $100 jackets just to grab an Old Navy tank top because they was looking for a certain tank top in a certain color. So that's always dope for me just to be able to kind of get some of those pieces at really great prices. But um, as people are coming into the chat, hit the like button, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, drop any comments, any questions you guys have in the live stream because that's where I'm going to be answering questions as I'm going through some of this. And of course, as you guys know, if you guys have any really good questions, I'm going to uh, probably make a second or third video based on some of those questions just because I know if you guys are asking questions, somebody else might be able to learn from that as well. So definitely keep those questions coming in um, and I'm going to just jump straight into it. I got a bunch of pieces here to show you guys. First thing I'm going to show is this camera that I grabbed, and this is a Lumix camera. Show you guys a close up of that. This is the Lumix, uh, I believe it's a Leica lens, and it is the DMC ZS ZC uh, 25. So you guys can check that one out. Check the comps on this particular camera. Um, I paid five dollars for this, it was ten dollars, so I paid five, and it was. Selling for like 50 to 60 bucks on eBay. The only thing is a lot of times they were selling for that price and people had uh, the chargers included. They also was uh, throwing in char uh, chargers, cases, batteries. Excuse me. People were really just like making bundle deals of these type of pieces. So I might end up ordering a camera charger just for this particular one off of eBay or Amazon, just so I can make it a complete deal and try to shoot for that $60 price point. But if not, I'll just charge maybe 50 bucks for this camera because it still is in really good condition. And as you guys know, these older cameras, these really do sell really well for me. I usually get 50 bucks for a lot of these older cameras that I get because a lot of people pass on it, but these are the stuff that sells to me all year long. Let's see who's in the chat. Uh, howdy from Texas. What's going on? Uh, how many listings is a sweet spot to have? That's a really good question. When it comes to listings for me, I used to have, uh, I started off just like everyone else would start with selling the stuff in my closet. So that was like 30 to 50 items. But at this point, I have about 500, closer to six at this point. And that's really something I can manage. Um, I'm pretty sure I can probably manage more as my systems begin to improve, but it, it, everybody's different. You know, some people, they're only doing eBay, they're only doing Poshmark, so they can uh, kind of decipher what they want to do with their inventory. And some people are just full time with uh, online reselling, but I'm also doing YouTube, as you guys know, and I'm just doing some other stuff on the side as well. So for me, I don't have the time to manage thousands and thousands of inventory by myself because it's a one man show here, but a sweet spot. I would say like 300 for, for those people that are trying to do it on a high level, but you know, might not have enough time to be full time. I think 300 is, is really, really good. Uh, someone said, congrats on getting married. Thank you very much. Um, hello from Atlanta. So we got Texas, Atlanta. We got people from all over the country. That's what's up. Uh, have you ever bought from Goodwill online? Uh, that's from Darren Russell. I never bought from Goodwill online. I, I actually need to like, I think the Goodwill in my area, what they're doing, they kind of, they, they don't necessarily know which, I think they have a, like a list of certain brands that they automatically put online. And from what I've heard from other people in my area, they say a lot of this stuff sells 
the same price it would sell for in the store. So like six to seven to 20 bucks. So I definitely need to start checking it out, but um, it's an auction style. So you got to pay, really pay close attention to those type of stuff. Sometimes you might have to stay up late, wake up early, but um, I'm, I'm going to definitely try to get into it. Uh, let's see. I've been hearing your name on other reseller YouTuber channels all over. You've officially made it between other channels using your advice and speaking at PoshFest. Thank you very much. I've officially made it. We made it. Now, that's the stuff. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's dope. And the one thing that, I, that for sure is the fact that, you know, the resellers community small, as long as you're positive, as long as you're putting out uh, relevant and useful information, the name the name will spread. You know what I mean? A lot of people when I first started was telling me, oh, I deserve more subscribers. I need to be such a bigger channel. But I always know when it comes to whether it's starting a channel, starting a business, you got to take your time and you just got to enjoy the process. And for me, as you guys know, I'm enjoying the process. I'm sharing these stuff with you guys just to one, inspire you guys to go out and get it. Two, so you guys know what to actually go out and pick when you're out in these thrift stores and garage sales and stuff. But three, I just really just enjoy sharing the the, the journey. You know what I mean? Five, 10 years from now, I'll, I'll go back and watch these videos and it'll be crazy to see the growth from then. But I feel like you got to document it as you go. Uh, let, me keep, let me keep showing you guys some of these stuff because I know that's what you're here for. But uh, still send the comments. So I'm going to go back to those in a second. But this is a Lululemon piece. We got some lint on there. But this is a Lululemon. I believe this is the scuba hoodie. Uh, these hoodies that are reversible. Uh, Lululemon, for me, I'm not going to say it's dying out by any means because I still sell it if I find it. I just know I used to get like 80 bucks for Lululemon hoodies, 60, 70 bucks all the time. Now I'm getting closer to that 40 range, uh, 50 if it's really dope. Uh, this one I might shoot closer to that 40 range, maybe 35 range. Um, not to say this isn't a dope hoodie, it is reversible, but I don't, I don't foresee getting a ton of profit on this anymore because Lululemon, just like most brands, it's one of those stuff that once it's hot, you know, you could really make some decent money, but you know, just like anything else, it kind of slows down. So drop a comment if you guys agree or disagree. If you disagree, let me know, and I'm gonna price this higher because you already know I'm trying to get trying to get all that money that I can get. So next, I got this pair of Prana pants, and Prana is one of those brands I'm selling all the time. You sell Prana here all the time. Um, this actually was like some paint on here, but I can definitely get this off because I'm as we're, as I'm showing you guys, it's literally scraping off. So I wash that off really easily. Who knows? It was probably a teacher or something that dropped some paint. But these were outside of the paint that I can get off. Really good condition. Uh, Prana video for those that don't know. That's what the tags look like. And I'm going to easily get about uh, 25 to 30 bucks for these on eBay or on Poshmark. I'm going to list them on both platforms and see where it sells first. I usually sell these type of pants um, on eBay within about 30 days. That's why I always grab it up. And a few months ago, I picked up like five pairs and a couple of them were brand new with tags and the ones that were brand new, I sold for like 60. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for Prana. Let's see who else is in the chat. Is it better to sell my shoes on Poshmark versus eBay? Um, it depends. I say listed on both because you really never know where it'll sell first. But um, on Poshmark, I like selling shoes there because of the shipping benefits of it. Um, some shoes I have that are kind of heavy, especially if it's brand new with the box. Um, if I'm shipping that to say New York, I'm gonna have to spend sometimes 16 to like 18 bucks, depending on the weight. If it's a pair of boots, I might have to spend even more. But on Poshmark, it's that flat fee of 679 as long as it's under five pounds. So you might want to um, you know, test the market, put it on both platforms. Um, but for the most part, I, I sell more shoes probably on probably on eBay still. I sell more products on eBay, but Poshmark has been really coming through in the clutch for me. And that's what I'm going to be talking about um, a lot, that Poshfest, just talking about the growth of my business by using Posh, Poshmark. Uh, I'm, a, I'm definitely like very into eBay, but I'm also just becoming very into Poshmark. As you guys can see, that's a lot of my, uh, a lot of my content is related to Poshmark because it's new to me. And it's something that I'm like still learning as I'm going. And as I'm learning, I'm sharing it. So uh, long story short, try, try both platforms. Uh, howdy from South Car South California. We we in here, Southern California. We out here. It's gray and gloomy today, but we, we out here. Uh, greetings from Washington State. Am I the only one that has tried selling on Poshmark besides eBay and have no luck? I find Poshmark so scattered and difficult. 
I haven't actually heard anyone say that. Usually most people say Poshmark is the easier platform, but um, I mean, just get, just just try to become more familiar with it. Make sure you're using the app. Um, just try to scroll through it. For me, it's super easy, especially the list. From a buyer's perspective, it might be a little confusing because um, some brands, they don't actually have like every brand in the Poshmark directory. But for the most part, I think it is pretty simple. So you just got to take your time, uh, cycle through it, get familiar with the app. And the more you use it, the better it will be. So uh, next up, we grab this Majestic Red Sox, uh, like a windbreaker jacket. This is like a baseball, like pullover. And I used to sell these fairly often. Anytime I would get jerseys, I usually would list them. This is size double XL. So something like this, I might get maybe 30, maybe 40 bucks. Really dope, really clean. I'm pretty sure this one would sell pretty quickly. Um, I don't I don't even know if baseball season is still going on, but I'm gonna list it ASAP and try to get it sold. But um, anything Boston Red Sox for the most part, usually it doesn't sell super fast. But I usually get at least 40 bucks. I had one similar to this and I sold it for 40. So that's what I'm shooting for. Um, hello from Chicago. Just want to say I've been learning from you when I first started. And thank you for everything you've done for everyone, including myself. Also, congrats on your marriage. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's the type of stories I like to hear when people saying that, you know, these videos are helpful because that's what it's all about. Got to pay it forward. You know what I mean? Uh, next, I grabbed this Pendleton robe, and this was crazy. Like, I had a Pendleton robe that I sold once for like 90 bucks, and it was really nice, really clean. And this one, it, just a little dusty. You know, it's probably been sitting in a garage or somebody's basement or attic for a while. So, I'm gonna definitely think about washing this one before I list it. Um, Pendleton robes, let me show you guys the tag. Uh, cause Pendleton shirts also sell for some decent money. So the Pendleton brand really good, really strong. I'll probably get maybe closer to that $80 price point with this. It also does have that, um, the belt. And I know anytime, uh, selling Pendleton robe, sometimes the belt isn't always there, but this is a size. Let's see the size on this. I believe it's a size medium. So this one should sell for some decent profit. And this is the time when people are buying stuff like this as gifts. So I'm definitely going to price it on the higher end and probably just wait until the right buyer comes along because this would be a really dope gift because you can't just go anywhere and find the Pendleton robe and just buy that in the store. So something like that I like to hold on to. Uh, just got a Tony Lama uh, boots from Goodwill today. How do I know if it's for male or female? I actually have no clue. I would probably type in the style code and see if it pops up on Google, type in the style code and see if it comes up on eBay. Outside of that, what I like to do sometimes, if I can't really tell, I'll put the shoe next to like I'll put up I'll put the size eight shoe next to a size eight in men's and try to compare it that way. Um, sometimes the width, if it says nine D or nine M, that's usually the medium width for men, so that might be a good detail as well. Outside of that, I'm not really too familiar with Tony Lama, but um. I, those tips should be enough. You should be able to find it. Uh, Lululemon still still sells, especially the jackets on Poshmark. But since so many people are thrifting, the price is dropped. Yeah, that's that's what it, that's what it is. Uh, I sell them on um, Poshmark. Like the last couple I had, they all sold on Poshmark. Um, they haven't really been moving that fast on eBay. But you kind of you kind of just gotta price them right. You can't price them too high because they'll sit forever. And if you price them too low, somebody will probably think something's wrong with it. But um, like I said, that forty to fifty dollar price range is usually a sweet spot for me. Next up, I got a pair of Y three shorts, Adidas Y three shorts, um, just the big Y three logo on the back, and these were really nice, really clean. There was there was a missing button on this on the back pocket, but outside of that, that's it. Like these are really dope. Um, I saw comps for these selling for about um like fifty bucks only because it's Y three. Um, summertime is over, so I'm probably not going to get that high of, you know, that high of a price point, but I'm going to put it up and see, I'll probably price it at 50, see if any good offers come in, but it is it is also missing that button. So I probably won't price it that aggressive, but, um, you'll see lately I've been trying to just price my stuff a little higher because I feel like I've been leaving some money on the table when it came to certain pieces. So some, some stuff I'm pricing a little more aggressive and then other stuff I'm kind of just like. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm making money regardless whether whether how much it sells for. But um, I can't take that attitude for everything. You know what I mean? Let's see. Um, 
Uh, Thread and Coffee. Hey, from Ohio. I just found a Pendleton coat. Very excited to list. Yeah, Pendleton coats should definitely be listed ASAP and you will get some decent money, especially if it's that nice plaid or that buffalo plaid on there. Those will sell for some good money. Uh, now, this was a crazy find. Got to back up a little bit for y'all. This was a crazy find. I don't know who would have donated this. This is a New York Rangers hockey jersey. This one, I've seen comps for this exact jersey for like 250 225 Crazy. I don't know why somebody would donate this. Honestly, I don't know why I find half the stuff I find because it's ridiculous, this type of stuff people donate. But um, these jerseys, super dope. They do make a lot of fakes of these, so you might you might want to pay attention to these tags so you guys know what the tags look for, look like. Um, this one I ran as much research as possible, and this one is definitely legit. And if it wasn't legit, I would have told you guys too, because I mean, I did find it from a thrift store. But pay attention to those tags, know what to look for. Um, this one I'm pricing aggressive. Like I said, there is some minor stains. So I'm going to try to get those stains out. I think there was one right here on the on the number. But, you know, minor, minor stains, something I could easily get out with either a Tide pen or just like a damp cloth. And I'm going to price this aggressive, probably 200 bucks. This jersey is probably worth way more than that. But like I said, I'm going to price it high. And I spent, I think, 130 bucks on Wednesday. So as long as this jersey sells for close to what I'm asking for, I made my money back just with this jersey alone. So that was a really good find for me. Um, the, the thing while I was saying, I, somebody threw this jersey, literally was digging through the piles and like kind of tossed that one to the side like it wasn't valuable, like it wasn't dope. Like for me, the average person would see this and still say to themselves, oh, this is nice. I wonder what this is about. But clearly she just wasn't into hockey, wasn't a reseller. So she just tossed it and I was able to, you know, grab it up. Uh, what about Modern Amusement as far as profit? Modern Amusement, that's that's a brand I see fairly often in my thrifts. I don't pick it up. I don't think I've ever sold anything Modern Amusement. Um, I don't really see it in consignment stores either. And I don't, if check the comps, let me know. I, it probably is selling for maybe 20, 25 bucks, but I know I haven't sold it, but it's just one of those brands that, you know, it doesn't really move me when I see it. Someone says, hello from Long Beach. I bought a women's Pendleton coat, but the tag is white. Did I buy a fake? Um, it might've been just vintage, you know, it might've been an older jacket. I mean, Pendleton stuff has been around for a while, so I'm, I guarantee the tags look different. Some tags are blue. I've seen some tags that were black. I've seen some tags that were white and with navy font, and those are just vintage as well. So you probably did just grab a vintage piece. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't think it's a fake right away. Um, let's see. Are you excited for Q4? And are you listing already for Q4 already? Absolutely. When it comes to Q4, I've been listing. Uh, that question's from Ken. I've been listing stuff. I've been basically sourcing for Q4 for the past six months. Like I've never put so much planning and preparation into a specific like time period for sales ever before. Last year, I remember I was expecting sales to just pour in and I was doing a lot of thrifting and I was expecting sales to pour in, but I wasn't, I wasn't preparing for it. And the preparation that, that comes with preparing for Q4 sales is literally just trying to buy brand new with tags items, trying to buy stuff, um, trying to buy quantity and stuff. You know what I mean? Like if you can get two or three or four of the same exact item and it makes it easy to list, try to do that. Even if you're not going to make a ton of profit, trust me, but just by having more quantity, more pieces available, you'll be making more sales. Um, like I said, I've just been sourcing more. I've been doing a lot of thrifting as well, but also going a lot of these outlets and these other um, like retail stores, I've been buying in in bulk. Like I bought a few pairs of New Balance sneakers yesterday. Listed them as soon as I got home. Um, I bought them, I think, fifty bucks, and they should sell for like one twenty, uh, that one ten range. So it's really just about trying to buy as much inventory, quality inventory, but trying to spend more money. And I know for some resellers, it's depending on the stage of your career right now, you might not feel comfortable spending that amount of money. But trust me, I it takes baby steps to do it. But trust me, if you see a good deal any time between now and say October or even late November, like Black Friday, when a lot of big sales are coming, definitely take the take the risk. Of course, do the research, but take the risk and you're going to make some sales. Trust me, because Q4 is when people are shopping like crazy. 
And I think the, the mistake I made last year was the fact that I just had inventory, but I didn't have enough to really make an, make an impact. So my sales were pretty regular. You know what I mean? I, my sales were pretty average, but I think this year, um, just last month, I had one of my best months ever and Q4 didn't technically start yet. So I'm really excited for Q4. Next up, you got this Tommy Bahama polo shirt. I don't really grab Tommy Bahama too much, but the last time I grabbed this uh, polo shirt, I believe it was like Supima cotton. It sold for 30 bucks in like three days. So if you guys see this Tommy Bahama Supima cotton polo shirt, grab it up. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys to grab Tommy Bahama all the time, but this particular one, this one is, is pretty clean. It will sell pretty fast for me just based from experience. I had like a, a turquoise colored one. So that one sold really quickly and it was a good size too. So definitely grab those up. If you see other Tommy Bahama shirts, I'll probably pass on them. They they don't sell like they used to. That brand is, is kind of dry right now, but you know, certain stuff does sell from that brand. Next up was a crazy piece. This one was from PacSun. This was a PacSun denim jacket. And it was just like a lot of logos, you know, it looked like, you know, somebody did some arts and crafts on it and all that, you know, uh, size medium, but it's that really boxy kind of vintage fit. So it's a medium, but it probably fits like a large or like an extra large. But um, these type of stuff, I'm not going to say I'll make a ton of money for it, but um, I picked this up. Jackets were eight, so I paid $4 for this. I'll probably sell it for 30, maybe 40 bucks because I don't know exactly how much uh, this is actually even selling for in um, PacSun. Like I said, maybe 30, 40, maybe a little higher depending on the comps if I see the same jacket sells for more. But um, these are the type of stuff that I'm grabbing now. I'm grabbing up jackets because, you know, now is the time where people are selling. Uh, let's see. Someone says, uh, how do you know if the integrity of shoes thrifted are intact? Bought a pair of men's dress shoes that look brand new at Goodwill and the soles and the soles fell apart in the parking lot. Damn, that's crazy. Um, sometimes I try to do the bend test. I don't have any shoes in front of me right now, but basically I would just grab the shoes and just kind of bend it, fold it a little bit because sometimes um, it might crumble as soon as you do that. And that'll just let you know to leave to pass on it. Um that's the best thing I can tell you guys to do. Just do that bend test really quickly. See if it's see if it's intact. See if it's if it's sturdy, and you know that that'll probably save you some time. But trust me, there's been so many times I went to thrift stores, and I got home and I realized there was no size tag. I realized that um, a lace was was damaged or there was a hole on the bottom. Like so many different stuff that happens after you get home and it's too late. But um, it's just part of the game. So. I'm used to it by now. I still make those mistakes. Uh, someone says, where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, you heard? Uh, 30, books, 30 bucks is average price for modern amusement modern amusement shirts or jackets. 30 bucks is not bad. That's how, that's, how, that's my sweet spot. I like to sell items that's like 30 bucks or higher. Um, not to say I'm not selling things for 20 or less, but 30 bucks, you sell that consistently and it really starts to compound uh, really well. So Someone says, I love a modern amusement, always cool colors, but I don't pick it up either. Modern amusement sold at PacSun. See, I had no clue about this. Uh, someone says, I love your show. You have helped to step my game up and selling. Wow, thank you for sharing. No doubt. I'm glad I could help. Uh, someone says, thoughts on Ray Dunn. I have no clue who that is. Uh, my Goodwill now has a $25 membership card where you get 25% off every time you shop. See, now that's a good investment is if you're somebody like me that goes thrifting every day, I would take full advantage of that 25% off. The only downside to that, what I'm thinking is that chances are your goodwill is their prices are just always going to be higher. You know what I mean? They're probably charging 10 bucks for golf polo shirts. So, I mean, that, that that's always something I, I'll battle with. But at this at this stage in the game, it's, it's more so about not trying to complain about the rising prices and just trying to you know, do as much research as you can so you can kind of stay ahead of them. But goodwill prices going up all over the place. You can't beat it. Next, this is something crazy. We got a champion jersey. Uh, this one, size 44 champion, Hakeem Olajuwon. Uh, really nice, really clean. And there's a couple stains here and there. Um, nothing I can't get out because this material, as soon as you wash it, hand wash it, throw, throw the Tide stain pen on there. These usually do come out. But even if it doesn't, that's fine. It'll still sell. 
Uh, I didn't check the comps on this one, but I know these champion jerseys are selling like crazy. So I'll probably get maybe 50 bucks for this one. I mean, summertime isn't, you know, prime time right now, but people are still grabbing these jerseys up, especially if you're in California or in the South. So I'm pretty sure I'll sell that for some decent money. This one, Kobe Bryant, Lakers, y'all know I'm in, y'all know I'm in Santa Barbara, but I'm a Lakers fan because LeBron is here. This one, for a fact, I've seen comps for these and these were selling uh, the purple one I've seen sold comps for eighty to a hundred dollars, and the gold one I've seen similar prices. Some was like seventy five. So there is a couple stains on here, um, on the back, right as you guys can see. But like I said, I'm gonna try to wash that out. And for the most part, there's no cracking on the letters, and that's something that's that's unique to me because usually I find these jerseys and they're usually really beat up. They might have some holes. Um, because I remember when champion jerseys, when I was growing up, when champion jerseys, nobody was you, like, you would buy this jersey if you couldn't afford the higher end jerseys. Like these jerseys were like 40 bucks brand new in the stores and like Jimmy Jazz and places like that. Drop a comment if you guys know what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, these are the jerseys that were the cheaper version. And then you, if you had some more money, you would get a Nike Swingman jersey that had the stitching. But now it's just crazy that these stuff is back in style and just worth more than the Swingman jersey. So. That's just crazy. Let's see who are, what y'all talking about in the chat. So you said, uh, when whatever happened to that nice fur coat you found, that fur coat that I found, I don't even know if I listed it. It's probably sitting in my death pile right now. I know I didn't list it yet because there was a hole on it, and I wanted to see if I can take it because uh, it was a pretty big hole. It was a pretty uh, large hole, so I knew if I was to sell it, I would take a really big price like decrease. So I was just, just holding on to it. I'll probably take it to a tailor, try to get it repaired. Um, but for the most part, I do know that it'll sell pretty high, maybe a hundred bucks. It might take a while, but I know I, I need to just get it repaired before I try to list it. Just, just, just to avoid myself of like taking way less than I deserve. Uh, hope to see a beautiful wife on another video soon. Yeah, she'll be, she'll be around. She's at work right now, but she'll be around. Uh, Ray Dunn mugs, glassware, extremely hot. Check them out. Some mugs upward to 40 to 50 bucks. Never heard of Ray Dunn mugs. I don't do a lot of glassware. I don't do like kitchen stuff. I know a lot of people, they do silverware and all that. That's dope. Like I need to probably get more familiar with those um, categories. I don't usually sell it. I like clothes. So I sell the clothes. Like for me, some people hate it. For me, I love it. So I stick to the clothing, but I'll probably start looking into more silverware and stuff because you know the, the, the market always changes. With clothing, you got to do your research all the time. With some of those pieces like Ray Dunn glasses, I'm sure those stuff you know hold their value much better than clothing does. But next up is this Adidas uh, sweatshirt for women. Really dope, really clean. I like this one a lot. This one was uh, size... I think this was a size medium. Yeah, size medium. This was the, clearly for women. You'll probably get 30 bucks for this one. Like I said, uh, half off day paid, I think, 250 for this one because sweaters in, in my Goodwill are usually five bucks. So really nice, really clean, perfect timing for something like this. So I'm going to list that one ASAP as well because I don't want to wait too long on listing those type of stuff. Uh, someone says, where do you source for new with tags items for quarter four? Like I was telling you guys before, I've been going to a lot of outlets. I've been doing a lot of uh, mainly outlets like Nike and Adidas in particular. Um, I also have a UGG outlet in my area, so I hit them up pretty often as well. Um, I go to Marshalls and Ross. I try to go there and try to scoop up what I can. And that's usually where I'm doing it. And I've also done some videos where I was sharing some like online arbitrage. Um, basically, what I was doing is I was just typing in end of season sales, clearance sales, and like going to like the 15th, 16th page in Google and really just diving in deep and trying to find some new uh, brand new tags items. And I was finding a bunch of stuff for crazy deals. I, I had shared the, the links to uh, in my Patreon group. I had let them know that these sales were going on and I spent about 1200 bucks and I didn't break, I didn't break even yet, but like I made a decent amount of profit in, a, in less than a month. So it was a pretty quick turnaround time, but I'm pretty sure as Q4 comes back, or, uh, gets closer and people are starting to buy more, I'll probably just clear them all out pretty soon. But um, you just got to do the research. You just got to, you know, just like I said, all those type of stores that I mentioned, you definitely just got to go there often. Um, the weekends usually are terrible to go to those type of places, especially outlets, because that's when everybody has time to go. 
Um, usually I like to go during the week when it's a little slower and then bring in a new inventory and I'm one of the first to see it. Next, this was also super dope. This was a uh, ASAP jersey, ASAP Worldwide. This was, uh, this was, I think this is like their merch. You know what I mean? I'm not really sure if it was uh, something special, but definitely something dope. It says start a black label, size medium. I might actually rock this to the gym because I, I do like ASAP a little bit. So I might, I might wear that for a little bit and get it sold. Uh, my man Mo, what's going on, brother? Uh, congrats on the celebration. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Uh, someone says, so new with tags rule. Uh, what do you, what do you mean? So new with tags rule? Not really sure about that. Um, congrats on your wedding. Thank you very much. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, how do you keep track of your break even stats? Any specific apps you use? Um, I don't use a lot of apps. I'm old school with it. I keep a pen and pad on my desk and I keep notes for video ideas. I keep notes for different big bulk purchases I make. And I just jot everything down in my book. And my book is basically my notepad. My, my book is my mouse pad. You know what I mean? So it's always on hand for me. Um, pretty sure there are some apps out there to make life easy, but I'm just old school with it. Pen to paper keeps track of all of my stuff. And for me, it's just makes it easy. Uh, next, this was this was crazy too. I, I found, I think two of these. I'll have to look again, but this one was really dope. This was a North Face uh, zip up. It says, are you 14? Not really sure what that's about, but they got this dope North Face patch on the sleeve. Um, had a little hit on the zipper as well. Um, back was nice and clean. Like, I don't know what this was necessarily about. I don't know what the RU14 for North Face is, but definitely going to be listing this on the higher end because I'm pretty sure this RU14 is something special. I didn't do the comps yet, but North Face zip ups, especially during this time, I'm usually getting like 40 bucks for these. Um, if this RU14 stuff is something special, I'm going to have to do some research. I might price it higher, but usually anything North Face around this time, I'm getting. A lot of I'm getting some decent profit for it. I don't list it too low. Um, during the summertime, if I get it, I'll probably sell it for like 20 bucks just to try to move it. But once the weather starts to change up, I sell my North Face pieces for a lot more money. Uh, next, we got this Ben Sherman jacket. And I don't usually pick up Ben Sherman. Uh, ben Sherman is one of those brands that it doesn't usually do much for me, but it was half off, four bucks. And there was some small stains on here, but nothing I can't get off. And I'll probably just, you know, list it maybe 30 bucks. We'll see how it sells. But like I said, I don't usually pick up Ben Sherman, but I did think it was dope. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like really quick. Ben Sherman Plectrum. You guys can check that out. Uh, let's see. RU14 is the so Soki, Soki Olympics. Hope I'm saying that right. But that's what's up. Thank you for that tip. I'm going to use that in the keywords. Make sure that I can, you know, attract as much eyes as possible. Uh, shout out to the Outlaw Hustler for the $2 super chat. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, someone says, uh, what are you wearing to Posh Fest? You know, you know, I'm coming correct. I'm coming correct, man. I, I tell you guys I love clothes. I don't, I'm coming correct. You know what I mean? I'm, long story short, I don't know what I'm wearing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm wearing yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put, put something together. So I look presentable and professional. I don't know what I'm wearing yet, but I'm going to grab something. Uh, I got a cute North Face windbreaker at the bins. It's on my Poshmark. No likes yet. Should I put it on eBay? I should, I listed it for 50 Yeah, listed on both. I always, I, at this point, I, I, I do store some things mainly for Poshmark, but the higher end stuff, anything like $40 or more, $50 or more, I listed on both on both platforms just to get more eyes. But you can't go wrong with listing it on both. Definitely can't go wrong. Is there more of a profit margin with new with tags? Like I can aggressively price a new with tag item? Absolutely. New with tags, new with box, you can get sometimes 15 to 20 bucks more if the, the shoe comes with the box. Um, new with tags, same thing. Somebody, somebody is willing to pay more for something brand new because they can, one, give it as a gift. Two, some people don't like the wearing used clothing aspects. They don't, they don't think it's cool. So they would rather pay more, but because even them paying more on eBay, they're still getting a crazy deal compared to retail. So it, you can always get at least 15, 20 bucks more, sometimes way more than that, depending on the item. Um, let's see. I might wear this to the gym. I love how you are passionate about fashion 
and you know there's always that slight chance you will find something for yourself. That's that's I think that's why I love it so much because I'm not materialistic like I used to be, but at the same time, if I see something dope in my size, I'll wear it a little bit, but I know the goal is to sell it. So if I bought it used, I'll wear it, then I'll clean it, then I'll sell it. So it's still, it's I bought it used so I can still, you know, enjoy it a little bit before I let it go. And that's just all part of the business. You know, you got to just do it. Uh, Dreads looking extra clean. Keep up the grind. I see the growth on your YouTube. Keep it up, bro. Thanks, bro. You know, you know, we out here. I had to do something special for the wedding. I had to do a little style. You know, my hair is growing. It took a while, but it's finally able to do something to this. Uh, do you ever source on Facebook Marketplace, either sell or buy? I've sold some stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, I've sold furniture on there. I've sold like uh, heavy items like jackets and coats that I didn't want to ship. You know, I sold golf clubs on there. I didn't do too much buying. I don't really do too much buying on there, but I know that's a good place to source, but I haven't done it. But when it comes to like selling bigger, bulkier stuff, I definitely take advantage of Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and those type of stuff. Um, let's see. Um, apologies if this post twice. Do you have info on the tax record on these platforms? Tax records. I got a tax person that does all my taxes for me, so I don't even I don't even play with it. Like when it comes to the taxes, I just hire a professional. They do the they do they do their job. I just do mine. I pay them for their service and they just, you know, cover cover you just make it do what it do. Like when it comes to taxes, I feel like it's so complicated and everybody's the situation is unique. So I don't even talk about too much tax preparation, stuff like that on the channel. That's why I just hire a professional and just let them do what they do best. Uh, do you have any long-term goals for your Poshmark business? Uh, one of the goals was literally to pay for the wedding. Now that the wedding has been paid for through Poshmark, the next goal is to siphon this money into another business. And I'm really looking into real estate. I'm looking into investment properties. I'm going to make a, I'm going to drop a big announcement soon. If y'all follow, um, if y'all follow Dom on her Instagram, she probably mentioned it already, but I'm going to talk, I'm going to go more in detail and share more information on that. But, um, we already making, you know, making real estate moves and it's crazy because you don't realize you're, you're doing the things that you were like dreaming of in the moment. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go into more detail, but the goal is literally just to, to funnel the money into bigger projects because making money is cool and, you know, living comfortably is cool, but I'm thinking long term. So I don't even try to touch the money or do all that type of stuff, waste it. Everything goes right back into the business or goes into something bigger. Uh, let's see. Does gyro hiking shoes sell? Uh, gyro, gyro, uh, I'm not really sure. I know that's a, I know that's a, a cycling brand. I know I've, I've sold their shoes, um, like, the, the cycling shoes with cleats on the bottom. I've sold those in the past for like 50, 60, sometimes a little more if it's like those carbon fiber um, cleats. Those definitely sell. I, I don't know if they have hiking shoes, but um, pretty sure they will still sell for you. Uh, the items in my Poshmark closet are not moving. I think I might start cross posting everything. Why not? The more eyes, the better. Either that or you, or you might need to you know, do a bunch of different stuff to make your stuff more appealing. I have to take better photos, lower the prices, all type of stuff you can do. Uh, what about Barracuda shirts as far as reselling? Saw some 2XL. Barracuda, I've seen that. I, I feel like it's like a gun, like a hunting brand. Like they they have like those leather patches on them. Um, I've seen some sell for like 30 bucks. I think I sold maybe one or two um, for me around that price point. And if it's a two XL, definitely grab it up because larger sizes sell best all the time. Yeah. I see you and Gigi going crazy with it, but keep it up, bro. I'm always here for support. I'm a holler, bro. I like, <laughs> I'm gonna like it up. I got to go to work. That's what's up. Thanks, bro. Me and my brother Gigi got his hair is like down to hair and mine is still up here, but I mean, I'm slow, but steady, slow, but steady. Um, does Caribbean Joe sell well on eBay? Nope. I do not sell that brand. That's like a like a Hawaiian shirt brand. I don't really touch it. I've actually been watching all your videos plus Paul Cantu videos. So my closet resembles both your closet and Cantu's clothing. Is it okay to sell crazy vintage plus uh, dress clothing? Absolutely. I used to sell strictly men's clothing, like strictly menswear. So like suits and ties and blazers. 
And not to say I wasn't doing well, but I wasn't doing enough. Like I was doing, like when you really focus on a niche, you can make some good money. But if you're not, if you don't have access to large quantities of those stuff, you're not going to do that well. So for me, I, I, I'm realizing I'm finding jerseys and sneakers and all these type of stuff. So I just mixed it up. As long as I knew what to sell, I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm selling men's clothing. So I figured if you're into streetwear, you're into menswear, I got a little something for everybody. But I don't think my eBay store or Poshmark closet resembles like a garage sale. But at the same time, it does have, you know, just different styles for men and women. Let's see. Let's see. You should make a second channel for the real estate. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I'm not going to lie. Uh the thing, the thing with making a second channel, it'll take some work, you know, but I think it probably will be beneficial because the people that are on this channel probably wouldn't care about that. You know what I mean? But I think that's a good idea. Um, I want to get into real estate too. I want some residual income. That's the, that's the goal. The goal is to, you know, usually every, everybody that starts to make some real money, they eventually go into real estate because that's one of the, you know, one of the best assets to have. It looks good on your credit. You know, you can make residual income. You can, you know, if, depending on the type of units you have, you can have a property manager and just run your stuff for you and you just make profit. Like it, it has its it has its um advantages, you know. Definitely something I'm gonna be getting into. Uh I got a couple more pieces for y'all too. Got this Pendleton shirt. This one was a crazy find. This was kind of dirty though, but definitely did pick up this Pendleton shirt. Um, this had leather patches on it, so. Definitely something a little different. You guys can see the leather kind of rough, kind of stained, but you know, I'm pretty sure I must, I'm at a dry clean this because it's kind of dingy. Once I get that cleaned, you should get some good money. Pendleton shirts with the leather patches, probably 50 bucks. As of right now, $2. This the shit is dingy. Uh, let's see who else is in the chat. Um, it's my first time. Uh, making a live show. So excited to be here. I've been following you almost from the beginning and love your videos. Can't wait to see you at Posh Fest. That's what's up. As soon as you see me, let me know. I'm here to meet everybody that, you know, supports the channel. I'm definitely excited to meet y'all for real. I got this North Face zip up, uh, North Face TNF Apex uh, flight series on the back. I think this, I think this might be like a runner's jacket or like, you know, like somebody that's, you know, with, active at night because it does have the 3m strips on it so something like this not sure how much it'll sell for maybe 20 bucks not 20 maybe 30 bucks i'm, I'm not gonna price it too aggressively because i'm not too sure but i'm gonna type in flight series uh light jackets 3m use those as keywords to see how much it sells for and we'll see about that um let's see what should i have asked what I should have asked is, do these platforms send us something similar to W-2 at the end of the year? How did we get that information before we go to the tax? Thanks again. Oh, yes, they will definitely send, eBay will definitely send you a W-2. I believe if you make more than $2,000 or more than 100 um, and or more than 100 transactions. So I believe it's, I, I believe those are still the rules, but eBay is definitely going to send you your tax information. Poshmark collects tax on our behalf now, so they're definitely going to send you something um, as well. Probably probably as soon as the tax season start rolling around, you're going to start getting all that information. Um, selling online nowadays, they're definitely taxing us, so don't worry. You, you're going to get your stuff one way or another, and if you don't, you know, just contact them and just let them know you didn't get it, but you'll definitely be getting it because I get it every year, same time, to my email. Uh, Let's see. The Outlaw Hustler. Kills, how your sales been since the issue with promoted listing on eBay? My sales have dropped off. Um, I'm currently going through like a, I'm kind of going back and forth with promoted listings. At, for, at first, when it came to promoted listings, I was very, uh, I was very aggressive with it. Everything was promoted 1%, 2%, everything. And of course, after I checked out that, that video from Rally Roots, where they were talking about if you have if the buyer has ad block on, on their um, browser, they won't be able to see your promoted listings. And with eBay, what they're doing is that they're only showing the promoted listings before you would show, you would show up twice in the, in the listings. You would show up twice in search. You would show up first at the promoted listing at the top, and then you would show up again through the organic search. 
but rally root said they basically did a test and they did a really good video and it showed that if buyers are if they have ad block on their browser you buyers won't even see that uh sponsored or promoted listing so i'm kind of going back and forth some things i'm i'm not promoting anymore some things i am but i'm very um i'm on the fence so i'm gonna do my own test and i'm gonna do a follow-up video and let you guys know how that's playing out but as of right now like the my last few listings i listed about maybe 80 things in the blast just this week about 80 things on ebay and more than half of them were not promoted but before everything was promoted so i'm just kind of running a test and seeing how it works um some of the things that i've listed sold really quickly being promoted or not so i'm, I'm leaning towards not promoting my listings anymore only because that fee that they charge it adds up I told you guys in a previous video, I paid eBay way too much money last month. Granted, I said I made the most I've ever made. So of course, the more you make, the more they take. But a lot of my, my, a lot of my sales came from promoted listings. And whether it was an additional 50 cents, an additional dollar, it adds up. So I paid them way too much money. So I'm kind of over it. So um, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Have you ever gotten... Let's see. Let's see. Uh, have you ever gotten into reselling glasses frames? I've noticed you rocking some different frames as I have been binge watching your vins in the last few days. Yeah, I got I got some different glasses. I don't necessarily sell frames. I just like different glasses just to switch it up because, you know, just so it could, you know, coordinate with the outfit. You got to coordinate. But, you know, sometimes I just I really just wear the same like four or five. But you know, those of us that are glasses people, you know, we like to switch it up, but some glasses do sell. Like if I'm in the thrift store and I'm going to the glasses section and I see some frames, I'll look through them just to see if any of them are like a Chanel or some, you know, some type of name that, that I would know. And sometimes I'll pick it up and sell it because some people just sell, they just want the frame. They'll take out the, the glass and they'll put their own uh, lenses in there, but they definitely do sell for some good money. Uh, found multiple Orbis items since watching your channel. So shoes, shirts, and recently a travel bag that I bought for two bucks and sold it for forty nine. Thanks for the brand awareness. That's what's up. Hell yeah, that's what's up. Orbis is one of those brands that I don't pick up everything Orbis anymore, but Orbis sells quality stuff. So if it's like a nice jacket or a nice bag, like you said, I'll grab it. But plaid shirts, I don't grab them up like I used to. Like some some of their shirts, regular stuff, I don't usually grab it up. Um. Let's see. I've tried buy it now and auctions, no sales, driving me nuts. I'm not giving up though. Thanks for the encouragement. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta test different stuff. You gotta you gotta stick with it. The 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 key to success is just consistency. You just gotta stick with it. So if you if you're experiencing slow sales, you might have to go in and try something different with your photos. Try something different with your pricing. Try something different with you know whatever it is you're doing. Just try different stuff. Give it some time. See if it works. If not, move on. But um, that's the real key to success. You just can't stop. You know what I mean? The only reason why I feel like I'm starting to make any real money is because I didn't stop. And I'm just that. I'm, it's either I'm too stubborn to stop or I'm just like, you know, that little bit of success you get, those little, those little battles that you win just motivate you enough to keep going. So just find those little wins, those little victories, and just, you know, keep moving because there's money to be made out here. Believe me um ebay more than 20k and 200 transactions yeah did i say 20 or 2000 i'm not sure i'm no, definitely not sure anymore um i heard ebay is 100,000 and 2000 transactions that's uh that's through using paypal that don't have managed payments as an option yet uh, regardless you can use monthly statements with all your sales da -da -da -da. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I don't remember. I have to look it up, but I do know you'll definitely get, as long as you're making that, I believe it's 200 transactions, you're going to get a W2 from eBay. But regardless of anything, you should definitely still file your taxes regardless. I'm not going to tell you if you don't get something from eBay, you know, I'm not going to, don't, don't blame me and tell me that you're not about to do your taxes. Do them shit. Uh, let's see. Um, do you use Depop and Grail? No, I do not use Depop or grailed i've been looking at grailed i've been looking to see if i should get into it i promised y'all a video a long time about grail i just didn't get to it yet but um, i'm gonna test it out on grail depop i definitely haven't tried that i don't think i sell depop stuff like maybe those jerseys might be better for depop those champion jerseys but 
I don't sell a lot of vintage. So I think that's probably why I'm not like super excited to do um, Depop. Um, this was another dope piece I grabbed up from that half off sale. This was a John Varvatos blazer. And John Varvatos is one of those brands that I don't always grab it up. But if it's quality and it looks dope, I'm going to definitely grab it. This one was nice. This was like a corduroy blazer. Um, really good condition, as you guys can see. Practically like brand new. Nice suede velvety feel to it. Nice big uh, buttons on there. So these should be, and this was a size 42. So size 42 regular, pretty average size. So this should sell pretty well. If it was size, you know, 46, 48, I would be even happier. But 42 is an average size. So I'm pretty sure it'll sell for a decent amount of profit. I'll probably price this maybe 80 bucks. Um, you know, corduroy is definitely something people are going to be looking for in these next coming months. So I'm going to price it a little higher and just wait for the right buyer. Next was this pair of Levi's Made and Crafted Jeans. Levi's Made and Crafted is one of those brands that um, it don't sell for a ton of money on eBay, but it usually sells pretty quick for me. So I always grab it up. I always grab it up. These will probably sell for like 35, maybe 40 bucks. Um, that's a green pair of pants. I don't remember what size these were. Um, the size tag. Just so you guys know what Made and Crafted looks like too. Literally says Made and Crafted on in Levi's right there. And this this looks like a size 32. Size 36. Yeah, size 36, 34. So these should sell maybe 35, 40 bucks. We'll see. Also, guys, don't forget to hit that like button for your boy. It goes a long way. Hit that like button, you heard? Next, we got this pair of cool pants, cool shorts. Cool is one of those brands that I grab up pretty often. Anytime I find it, I usually do grab it up. It, do, it does sell pretty quickly. These are a pair of shorts, so I'm not sure how fast these will sell. But shorts in my Goodwill are like $4. So these I pay, I think, two or $4.99. So I paid $2.50 for these. So definitely um, one of those brands I always grab up. Cool. Let me show you the tag just in case you guys haven't seen it. Um, cool sells pretty fast for me, though. So definitely, if you guys see them, definitely grab it up. Um, let's see. Should I stand? Should I stand pat on some of my price? And that didn't sell during the summer and wait. Um, if you got, if you have some stuff that didn't sell Q4, I usually do price adjustments like after the 30 day mark. Cause I usually price my stuff pretty aggressively. Um, I don't usually price stuff out of the market. So excuse me, after 30 days, I'll do a price adjustment. Um, if you got coats and like leather jackets and boots that didn't sell over the summer, I wouldn't suggest you lower your prices yet. Like give it some time, wait until people, you know, start searching for more winter related stuff. But your summer stuff, if it didn't sell yet, I would probably start dropping the prices, pricing them on the lower end just so they can move and just so you can get rid of them. Cause I mean, they, they will still probably still sell because people will be going on vacations and stuff like that. But for me, I'm kind of moving away from summer stuff because, you know, Summer's basically over. You always got to be a couple seasons ahead when it comes to this. Like I've been sourcing big coats and snow boots all summer. So that way I can, you know, have more of this. And then on, and then I, honestly, by like January, December, I'm going to be sourcing more for summer stuff so I can be ahead of the game again. So that's kind of how it works for me. Um, I use 100% of my Poshmark earnings to buy stock. Now that's beautiful. Let me know what stock you're buying, because when it comes to stocks right now, the market is is very, very finicky, very up and down. One minute I'm celebrating and then next minute I'm like sad and I'm trying not to pay attention to our portfolio too much because it's, you know, right now I don't maybe it's just my stocks. because I got a lot of like tech related stuff. So my stuff is all up and down, up and down. But stocks is crazy right now. Uh, why don't you sell vintage um, for me when it comes to vintage? It's very subjective. Um, and this question is coming from Beatology. You always support. And so shout out to you. I definitely appreciate the support. Uh, when it comes to me selling vintage clothing, it's very subjective. I was just talking to one of my boys about this yesterday. Um, it really just depends, right? So if I come across a vintage, say, a vintage Madonna t-shirt, if if to, to somebody that's a Madonna fan, they might spend, you know, two, three, four hundred bucks on this T-shirt. But if it's single stitch, it's a good brand. It's, you know, in good condition or whatever. 
But the person that doesn't care about that Madonna shirt, they might spend two dollars on it, and they might not see the value in it. So it's very subjective. You gotta you gotta find the the perfect buyer to even price your items to a good sweet spot. And for me, I rather focus on items that I can go to eBay, go to Poshmark, and see the comps, and say, okay, this sold for this price last week, so that's what I'm pricing mine at. As opposed to vintage, where it's a lot of one of one, it's a lot of um, you know very rare, very unique pieces. So it's kind of hard to decipher price points. I know with wrap t-shirts, you can definitely find those more in abundance. So you can kind of get a, a comp for that, like a vintage Tupac shirt or a tour merch for like Biggie. You can sell those because there's, you know, comps all over the market. For the most part, it's just a little too finicky for me. So I like to stick to the stuff that I know for a fact. I know how to price it because, you know, that just works best for me. And then honestly, too, I don't find a ton of vintage. So if I find some good vintage, I'll still pick it up, but I don't find it like that. So that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, have you ever sold Ariat boots? I sold a pair on Poshmark a few, maybe a few days ago. It just cleared. Um, this was approved a few days uh, this morning. I think I sold them for 60 bucks on Poshmark, maybe 50. Ariat boots, they sell well, men and women. Uh, a tip on the promoted listings. If you charge shipping, promoted listings are cheaper. They only charge you the promotion charge for the price of item and not the shipping. Oh, I didn't know that. But the thing is, eBay still charges you whatever you call the, they will charge you final value fees on shipping and on the cost of the item. So eBay is, is in our pockets every way of the, the transaction from the listing fee, from the transaction, the shipping they take a fee for everything so i mean i'm glad that they don't take an additional fee because it was promoted but still that's still a lot of money ebay is killing me these days uh what would you recommend using to get stained out of cool pants um some of those stains it's kind of hard to get out I, I use a tide pen sometimes i might just hand wash it and try to like just rub it out myself but for the most part um tide pens usually work well for me but some stains are just too tough and they don't go anywhere. Um, what would you recommend using to get? No, I just read that one. Uh, someone said Tesla, Tesla stock. Oh, that's, a, that's an expensive stock right now. That's like $400 a stock. I'm not, I can't afford Tesla stock, Pam. Uh, St Christina, still new at this. Am I correct to think Q4 is the fourth quarter? Absolutely. Q4 is the fourth quarter. Um, I got a couple other pieces and then we're about to be out of here. We got almost doing an hour, but hit that like button for me. Uh, definitely hit that like button, y'all. Uh, this is an Arcteryx jacket. Arcteryx is one of those brands I don't find often, but whenever I do, I'm always excited because it's one of those brands that, you know, sells for some decent profit. Uh, show you what that Arcteryx logo looks like. And this is just a simple windbreaker type of jacket. Um, Arcteryx, very similar to like Patagonia and Cool and all those other outdoor brands. Um, this one was really nice, really clean. So I'll probably sell this one for about 80 bucks, maybe a little more, maybe 90 to 100 bucks, maybe 80 to 100 bucks. I'll sell this one for. Um, I've had a couple of these sell for like 100 bucks. I, I usually list them higher. And if I get a good offer for 100, I'll take that. But I usually do sell those pretty quickly. So definitely be on the lookout for Arcteryx. And last but certainly not least, those that stuck around, y'all can see the, the best find of the day. This Burberry trench coat. Burberry, Burberry. This was crazy. Way too big for me. Way too big. But it was, you know, it's like a raincoat. So this is something I'm going to probably list for. Not really sure. I'm going to probably price this maybe 200 maybe three i'm not sure i know i'm pricing it high because it is burberry it is 100 percent authentic you guys can check out the tags and i like showing you guys the tags because for one you can get to see what what to look for when you're out there searching and two if i'm wrong and if it's fake let me know but this one i did my research did my due diligence and i've sold several burberry pieces in the past so i kind of know all the details to look for um here goes the burberry london tag on the inside um these are all small details to be on the lookout for um sometimes you would see stuff that just looks very very weird whether the font is off whether some of the stitching is very crooked um sometimes the buttons feel very plasticky and cheap like there's so many uh subtle details to be on the lookout for but as you guys can see the buttons on here 
these are um i believe these are what you would call horn buttons or horn tassels or whatever the case is but these are you know very high quality details to be on the lookout for so these are all the stuff that i really try to you know make sure that are there when i'm seeing burberry pieces because they do sell some burberry fakes out there they are out there you just got to be careful but this piece four dollars for this one um they probably didn't even realize it because of course they would have probably tried to raise the price on me whether it was 50 percent off day or not but because it was in the bins and it was in the back you know they didn't even get a chance to you know tag that one and honestly something like this they probably would have put that on their online store and i probably would have never even got to see that so that's one of the best things that um, oh completely forgot i'm keeping these this was not part of 50 percent off sale but i got these um from Goodwill. I believe I got these on Tuesday. These were very dirty. Grabbed them up, did some cleaning to them. They did have some scratches on this side. These are a pair of cool gray Jordan 11 lows. These, if you guys see anything that looks similar to these, grab it up. These usually sell for like maybe like a hundred bucks, 120 on eBay Poshmark. Um, the condition on these aren't the best because there are some scratches and there's like some fading on the, the leather on the upper. But I just wanted to show you guys these. Um, I'm probably going to wear these for a little while to the gym, maybe a couple months. And then, of course, I will sell them. But um, just wanted to show you guys. If you guys want a cleaning video, like a shoe cleaning video, let me know because I got a bunch of shoes that I need to clean. Obviously, I didn't show you guys any shoes in this video because I have like 50 pairs of shoes that I need to clean. So if you guys want another shoe video, uh, drop a comment, let me know. But um, for the most part, I think I'm all done. I did a full hour on here, so I definitely appreciate the support. Uh, Beatology says do the cleaning video. So you asked, and I will do it, bro. I got you. All right, yo. So thanks for watching today's video. If you guys got any comments, questions, drop them in the comment section. And see you guys in the next one. Peace.